On today's episode, I talk about the three most painful email marketing mistakes that I have made and I've seen over 300 companies making, how to fix them, and I even throw in a bonus mistake that I wasn't planning on covering, but I'm telling you right now, do not ever, ever, ever do what I talk about in this episode with bonus tip number four. I'm going to stop this intro now. I'm going to let you get into the episode. I kept it short. It is 15 minutes of pure gold to directly apply to your email in your business, whether you're just getting started, whether you've been doing this forever, or you want to apply to your friend's business. Either way works. Let's get into it. I'll see you guys inside the episode. You know, you know, you know I love email, and we're going to talk about email today. And with most of the winning Wednesdays, these Wednesday episodes, I always have this goal. I have this goal to talk for like 15 to 20 minutes, and I normally go into like story and everything else, but here's my intention for today's episode. My intention that in about a minute to two minutes from now when I get started, that I am just going to bring the fire when it comes to email. I'm going to want you to listen to this one a few times. Get a pen. Get a piece of paper, listen to what I'm saying and listen to what I'm not saying because we're going to go straight to the meat of this. And I'm going to go until I'm complete and I feel like you have every single thing you need, every single thing you need to not do this and to understand this and to put this into practice when it comes to email. And I'm going to wrap for the day because all I want you to do when we're done with today's episode is take one thing, a half of thing, all the things, go do an audit of your world. And immediately put them into practice and then come let me know, come let the team know that it's in and you love it and you feel it and then you're ready for the next step because email is the backbone of your business. I said this uh, in my training for the eternal flame method with email. If your business is the human body, then email is the blood that pumps through it, right? I call it the fire in your veins. Email is the fire in the veins of your body. Sometimes it delivers nutrients. Sometimes it delivers oxygen. Sometimes you don't know it's there, but it's still delivering things to different parts of your body that it doesn't need or that you don't consciously know that it needs. And that's what email is for your business. So today I'm going to share the most painful email marketing mistakes that I have made that I see others making and the ones I have seen behind the scenes of these massive companies all the way up to hundreds of millions of dollars. And it's still blows my mind. And so I'm going to get into it right now. I did it. I nailed the two minute context to get into it. And I've broken this down into probably the three biggest mistakes. So you can stop making them. You can use these. You can apply these everywhere. Think about them everywhere. And so here we go. Mistake number one, getting leads or email addresses before having a sequence in place to take them on a journey. Let me say that again. Mistake number one is collecting an email address from a beautiful human being before even knowing the journey you're going to take them on or building that journey you're taking on them, i.e., I call this hoarding attention and burning your business. Hoarding attention and burning your business because you have to remember that in the moment that somebody makes the decision to give you their email, You have their interest peaked. You have them at the height of an emotional experience. And they're like, oh my God, I'm in. And then crickets. Sign up for my newsletter. And then they never get emailed. Sign up for my lead magnet. I'll send it to you once and then disappear. Sign up for this giveaway, which you should never build an email list with that, but that's a whole different podcast. Actually, I'll make that bonus mistake number four. Do not do giveaways to build your email list. You're welcome. That whole tip is complete. That's number four, but now we're getting back to number one. You need to know where your customers are and where they are going to go and how you are going to get them there before they ever give you their email or else you will create reactants and keep them stuck. When you give a promise to somebody, when you get their attention, when you enroll them into what it is that you have to offer and then they give you their email and then at the height of the experience you have it and then you disappear, you have conditioned your subscribers and customers that you don't show up consistent. And I'll use a television show as an example. My daughter loves Friends. But do you think Friends would be as popular of a TV show as it was if it showed up at different times on different days inconsistently? No. 
People want to feel safe. They want a routine. They want consistency. They want trust. And you have to give that to them or you have to set expectations about what's to come. But if you make a promise of like, sign up today and I'm going to help you with this and then they don't ever hear from you again, well, guess what? You are conditioning them that you're not consistent, you're not going to show up daily, they can't trust you or you're not there to deliver and they can't do anything with you. And so the number one mistake is people literally getting people's email addresses to hoard attention before you've designed a journey or the next steps for them to follow. It breaks trust. It makes them feel unsafe. And in my opinion, it creates an anti-marketing machine. Like, can you imagine the conversation? Like, oh, I saw this guy, George. You know, he told me to opt in for this five-day sequence and uh, I'm getting ready to do it. Have you ever done it? And the guy's like, you know what I did? And I never heard from him again. That doesn't bode well. Or I was so excited, but then he never showed up. Or I was so excited, he sent me two emails, then he disappeared. I.e., sign up for my newsletter, I'll email you weekly, and I don't. Sign up for my daily newsletter, I'll email you daily, and I don't. And even myself included, I have a daily newsletter that some of you were on. And I got to a point where I needed a break, but I didn't stop showing up. I sent an email that said, we are going to be taking a break. And so this is what to expect. Go back to the previous emails, and I will let you know when I'm ready to come back on. But you have to manage that. So you have to have a sequence or a journey designed in place before you ever get the email, even if that journey is not delivered on email. You might be collecting emails to put them into a Slack channel or into a Facebook group, but you'll have to know the next steps to deliver it regardless of if you're emailing them again. So mistake number one is getting an email before you have a sequence in place to take them on a journey. So everybody say this to me right now. George, I will not do that again. George, I will not do that again. George, I will not collect email addresses just to hoard attention in hopes that if I send them all one big broadcast at once, that some small percentage of them will buy my product while convincing myself that I'm not burning relationships with the rest of them and realizing this is a liability in my business. It's a lot to remember, but you can listen to that again. So what I'm saying is don't do it. Mistake number two is when people send follow-up emails that are immediately transactional without first delivering on the promised value. How many times have we gotten this? We go personally give our email to somebody. Hey, sign up to receive our 10 best smoothie recipes you can make in five minutes or less. And then we get the email and there's two sentences about helping me make those smoothies and then five emails trying to sell me a product or sell me a service. Or, hey, I'm going to help you lose five pounds in seven days. I get email one saying, hey, you did it. Here's what you need to do. And then tomorrow you're like, hey, I lied. That's not really going to help you that much. But if you pay me money, I will help you get to that finish line. You should never, ever, 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 ever transact before transforming. If you give somebody your word, if you make a commitment, if you say, I am your leader, I am your guide, I'm going to help you go from A to B, you can't interrupt them in the middle of the journey and be like, hey, just kidding, now you have to pay me. You can't do it. You have to protect the journey. And I have a question. Who do you think is more likely to pay you and hire you? Somebody who you promised something, got their email, they didn't get it into practice and momentum and feel overwhelmed and then you tell them to buy. Or somebody that you promised something, you actually helped them get it and it felt easy, they were complete and in momentum and then you offer them to buy. There's a reason people have free trials. There's a reason people let you try things. There's a reason that mattress companies send you a mattress with a 90-day guarantee. There's a reason that your lead magnets and email gathering should complete a journey or give them a winner momentum before you try to get them to commit to marrying you for life because it works. It creates momentum. It creates trust. It actually helps them become a better customer. So the mistake that I see is people send transactional emails without ever delivering on the promised value. And that's a big mistake. You're actually hurting your business. You're hurting your chances of succeeding and you're overwhelming people more and they're like, wait, did they only get my email and make that promise so they could sell me a service? Did they only get my email and make that promise and then make it seem hard so I had to pay them to get it? And then ask yourself, like, when was the last time that worked on you? When was the last time that that happened and you were like, you know what? Yeah, I'm going to buy them. I'm going to pay them and I'm going to tell all my friends about them. Think about it. Most of the challenges that we have with email marketing 
can verse be solved by looking in the mirror and asking ourselves, is that how we engage with email? Is that how we would engage with email? Would we be okay if our mom or our daughter or our wife or our husband got that email? They'd be like, yeah, honey, I'm so excited. You know, they said they're going to help me lose five pounds in seven days. I want you to do this with me. And I'm like, yeah, babe, let's go. And the next day she's like, babe, I thought they were actually going to help me. Now they're just trying to pay me money or trying to charge me money. And I'm like, what? No. Look in the mirror. You have to complete a journey. You have to transform on the promise. You have to earn the right to escalate them up a ladder. And the truth is, is this is one of the secrets, but it requires patience, intentionality, and intentionality, intentionality and heart. Think about it. Like if I literally put a hundred people in a room and a hundred people are there and I'm like, all right, everybody, listen, I'm going to help you all lose five pounds. I want you all to go do this, blah, 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 blah. And in the next seven days, you'll lose the weight, right? That's awesome. They're like, yeah, 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 yeah. And then they leave. And then an hour later, I'm like, all right, I know I told you to do that, but instead pay me now. How many people are going to pay me? Probably not that many, a few, but not that many. Versus if I put 100 people in the auditorium and I was like, hey, I'm going to help you guys lose five pounds and I'm going to make it easy for you. You don't have to do anything. Just be here tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. And then the next morning at 7 a.m. And then the next morning at 7 a.m. And no matter what, almost all the people have energy. They've been hydrating better. They have, you know, more commitment. They have the momentum of the group. And then I'm like, all right, guys, who wants more of this? And everyone's like, yeah, me. Think about it. Just think about it. And then mistake number three. Mistake number three. People try to sell the modality rather than the actual benefit they get from it. You can't logically sell people. Features don't create results. Features overwhelm people. Nobody has changed their life by being like, oh yeah, that's what it looks like on paper. They have to feel it. They have to be enrolled. They have to know what the benefit is. We have to stop focusing on the transaction of the sale and focus on the after state. Focus on the benefit. Focus on the story. Focus on the transformation that people are going to achieve through what it is you have to offer. Right? Like I watch people literally be like, hey, here's my 15 best recipes. And I'm like, great. But compared to here's the 15 best recipes that can all be made in under a minute to give you two weeks worth of smoothies. And I focus on time and energy and output and results and maximizing all of it. You have to go deeper than the surface. You have to go deeper than the surface. Like there's a reason you hear things like story sells. People do not buy iPhones because of the feature benefit stack. Half of us don't even know what all that tech means. That's why Apple doesn't run commercials talking about the tech in the phone, what the processor is, what the memory is. They use it sometimes, but they're showing how easy it is to take pictures, how easy it is to be a videographer, how easy it is to blah, 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 how easy it is to edit. How e- They're focusing on the after state, the transformation. And when it comes to email, When you're emailing people, whether you're trying to gather emails or you're trying to get people to open your emails or engage with your emails, you cannot be robotic and focus on the transaction and expect the transformation. You have to focus on the benefit. You have to focus on their life being better, on their business being better, their emails being better, their customer journey being better, their team culture being better, their energy being better, their sleep being better, their relationship being better. You pick it. And you can sit here all day and you can tell me that collagen helps you with hair, skin, and nails and not that many people are going to buy. But when it helps you and your joints not hurt for the first time, when it's tasteless and you can add it to your coffee and you'll recover faster and you'll have more energy And for the first time, you won't have to wear a knee brace. And the elasticity in your skin will come back so your wrinkles will go away. And it will make you feel youthful and give you energy. And like, think about all the things. Go look at the marketing that works on you. Go look at the things that get you involved. When we focus on the transaction, quote unquote, and we focus on the features, we make it feel hard and overwhelming. And it actually makes it harder for people to achieve it. When we focus on the benefit, they can feel it. They know what it's going to do for their life. It gives them this fuel that pulls them out of where they are and actually moves them forward one step closer to their goals. And so those are the three biggest mistakes that I see people making when it comes to email and the fourth bonus one. I'll go with the fourth bonus one first. Please do not build your email list by 
doing giveaways. Did I say don't do giveaways? No. I'm saying don't try to build your email list on giveaways. I will talk for hours on why this works and doesn't work and I actually cover it in our Eternal Flame program, but do not do it. So number one, don't do that. Or number four, don't do that. Number one, do not get leads or hoard attention before you have designed a sequence or a journey knowing exactly where you're going to take people and how you're going to get them there. Number two, do not get somebody's email to bait and switch them into then selling and transacting before you've completed a journey. And number three, stop trying to sell the modality rather than the actual benefit that they get from it. Focus on the transformation in their life. Focus on their benefit. Focus on where they're going to be and how they're going to get there. And it will work every single time if it's supposed to or that's your right customer. So these are literally the three biggest mistakes. Took me 12 years to learn them and I'll never make them again. I've seen these in companies left and right and I am telling you, I'm telling you, especially number one, getting leads before having a sequence in place to take them on a journey. I get asked, George, how'd you double that company? George, how'd you get so many sales? George, how'd you get those emails to convert so well? Well, go listen to number one again. I'm telling you right now, Helping a human being complete something is 10 times more valuable than trying to sell them on something when they're incomplete. And I'm going to leave you with that. I hit it in 15 minutes. I'm really proud of myself. I'm going to let you go listen to this, digest this. And I want you to go in the Facebook group, go in the Relationship Beat Allergrams group. Let us know where you can apply this in your business. And if you want the next step, go hit up the team and ask them for the Eternal Flame program. Ask them for our Eternal Flame email program. I am telling you, I am telling you, I am telling you, I am telling you, email is easy, email is the secret, and email is that flame, that blood that's pumping through the body of your business that is a requirement, and it should be one of your biggest focuses. So I love you. Have an absolutely beautiful day whenever you're listening to this. I don't say this that often, but please make sure if you haven't subscribe to the podcast, you subscribe. Please make sure if you haven't reviewed the podcast, I would love it if you gave us a review, if it's made a difference for you. And then I'm going to challenge you. Can you send this episode to three friends and be like, dude, do this with your email. Send them, let them know, let us spread this love. I love you. I will see you in the next episode. I'm going to cue the beautiful outro with amazing music and I'll talk to you soon. So remember relationships beat algorithms. I'm outie.